If there is something that puzzles researchers and historians, it's the Egyptian world. Its history is full of mysteries and enigmas that some still remain unsolved. Was it possible that there was an airplane model during that time? Were the jewels made with pieces of meteorite? Stay with us to learn about some of the most impressive discoveries. Understanding a lost culture can be a challenge, often leading to strange theories. For example, the Sarah PM in Memphis, an ancient burial site for sacred bulls, where at least 60 animals were buried over 1400 years in sarcophagi made of solid stone that weighed up to 70 tons each. The cycle continued until around 30 BC when the cult of the sacred bull ceased and Roman rule was established in Egypt. The discovery of Sarah PM became an archaeological wonder and gave rise to several strange theories such as the one suggesting that the giant sarcophagi were meant for the burial of giants. However, the ancient Egyptians generally held animals in high esteem and archaeologists discovered a cat necropolis in Bubastis, a temple complex dedicated to the feline goddess Bastet. Excavations reveal thousands of cat mummies wrapped in linen bandages and adorned with amulets representing Bastet. North of Bubastis is a temple complex dedicated to Anubis, the jackal-headed god of death, where it is estimated that millions of mummified dogs are in labyrinthine tunnels. The catacombs were full of mummified ibises, falcons, crocodiles, cobras, and even baboons. The ancient Egyptians mummified anything that was not fast enough to escape, although this had a sacred meaning, and the mummified animal served as an offering. The Great Sphinx of Giza is a mysterious and impressive statue that has puzzled archaeologists and tourists for centuries. It is believed to have been built around 4,500 years ago for a pharaoh named Khafre, making it one of the oldest structures in the world. Despite numerous attempts to unearth and study it, there are still many unresolved secrets surrounding this enigmatic statue. One of the most intriguing mysteries of the Sphinx is the hole in its head, the purpose of which remains unknown. Some believe that the hole could have been used to anchor a crown, although there is no solid evidence to support this theory. In 1926, the hole was covered with a metal cap, and the statue was uncovered from the sand. Its head itself is another intriguing mystery. Some researchers believe that it originally had the head of a lion, instead of the human head it has now. Geologist Colin Reeder discovered that the body of the Sphinx is much older than its head, suggesting that the human features of the statue were added later. Additionally, the disproportion between the head and the body of the Sphinx suggests that it originally had a lion's head. Lions were powerful symbols for the ancient Egyptians, which supports this theory. Although some scientists have attempted to recreate the original appearance of the Sphinx with the lion's head, many Egyptologists are still reluctant to fully accept this theory due to the lack of new dating of the statue. However, the recent discovery of a void beneath the surface of the Sphinx has generated new speculation about possible hidden artifacts at the site. Around 20 years ago, a surprising discovery was made by archaeologists exploring the burial chamber of the necropolis of Sikh Abd el Kurna, located west of Luxor. A beautifully crafted prosthetic big toe was found, which belonged to the remains of a woman. This prosthetic, considered the earliest practical prosthetic discovered to date, was adapted to the remains of the daughter of a high-status priest, according to research findings. With the help of modern technology such as microscopy, x-rays, and computed tomography, scientists were able to determine that the wooden toe, dating back to the beginning of the first millennium BCE, was adjusted several times to fit perfectly to its owner's foot. This discovery suggests that the craftsman who created this prosthesis had advanced knowledge of human physiology. It is believed that the owner of the prosthesis died between the ages of 50 and 60 and is presumed to have suffered a toe amputation at some point in her life. The prosthesis was likely of great help as the missing toe could have been uncomfortable or embarrassing. If you're enjoying the video, don't forget to support us with your like. It motivates us to keep growing. The tomb of Tutankhamun was discovered in 1922 and turned out to be one of the richest tombs ever found. 
In fact, some even consider it to be the most important archaeological event in history. Additionally, his tomb is also surrounded by the mysterious curse of the pharaohs, which according to some reports, has killed archaeologists who dare to disturb Tutankhamun's tranquility, although it's just a myth. You've probably heard of his golden funerary mask, which has become an icon of Egyptian culture. One of the greatest treasures found in Tutankhamun's tomb are his six chariots, which are considered as the Ferraris of antiquity. In an era when technology was constantly evolving, these chariots were a technological marvel in themselves. Their wheels, for example, feature a rim made of flexible wood edge, allowing them to adapt to uneven terrain and absorb loads evenly. It's almost like having intelligent suspension in a modern car, but designed over 3,000 years ago. Moreover, each of the chariots has different sizes, demonstrating the great importance given to these vehicles at the time. Tutankhamun died at the age of 19 under mysterious circumstances. Several theories have been proposed about the cause of his death. The most accepted theory is that he suffered an accident in one of his chariots, which caused a fracture in his leg that became infected and eventually led to his death. What is known is that his death was a major event in Egyptian history. Despite his short reign, his early death has left historians and archaeologists with many unanswered questions about his life and reign. A recent discovery in an ancient Egyptian tomb has revealed something surprising. A necklace made of tubular meteorite stones. These stones, estimated to be around 5,000 years old, were discovered in 1911 in a cemetery around 40 miles south of Cairo. Most interestingly, these stones represent the earliest known examples of iron used in ancient Egypt thousands of years before the Iron Age. Scientists believe these stones are rich in nickel, which is a characteristic of iron meteorites confirming that it is not an alloy, but the original composition of the material. Additionally, researchers have found that these stones have a distinctive crystalline structure found only in meteorites. The jewelry was likely included in the funerary equipment because of its rare beauty and supposed magical properties. For the ancient Egyptians, iron was something very special because it was a metal that fell from the sky. In fact, this was confirmed with the discovery of the iron dagger in Tutankhamun's tomb, as the analysis of the dagger showed that much of the metal came from meteorites, which changed the way scientists viewed the use of iron in ancient Egypt. Previously, it was believed that the ancient Egyptians were not skilled in the production of iron objects until around 500 BC and that iron was rarely extracted in the Nile Valley. However, archaeological evidence suggests that the Egyptians knew the metal and used it to create pigments for art and makeup. In 1898, during a tomb excavation in Saqqara, a sycamore figurine was found that has generated interest among conspiracy theorists. Called the Bird of Saqqara, it is believed to have a ceremonial significance because it is modeled in the image of the falcon, a bird associated with important Egyptian gods like Horus and Ra. While some believe the bird is evidence that the principles of aviation were known centuries before they were discovered, others, including an Egyptologist, have dismissed these theories as unfounded. Additionally, some have pointed out that the images of flying machines and murals in the temple of the pharaoh Seti I in Abydos are simply the result of the common practice of pharaohs erasing the names of the predecessors and writing their own on top, which has resulted in overlapping inscriptions that can be confused with modern technology. Despite the controversy, attempts have been made to reproduce the design of an ancient glider with mixed results. That's all for today. I hope you've learned something new. Thank you so much for joining us today. Subscribe and activate that bell to not miss our next content. See you next time.